I will show you how you can connect two solar panels to a single battery. After writing an article on this topic a few years back and receiving numerous responses, I've decided it's time to create a video for a more visual and straightforward explanation. In this video, I'll present a clear diagram to show you that setting up your solar panels and battery isn't as complicated as it might seem. If you're still feeling unsure, don't worry. I'm going to break down the process into four simple steps. We will start by connecting the battery to the charge controller. Then I will show you how to connect the two solar panels together. Next, we will wire the solar panels to the charge controller. Finally, I will demonstrate how to connect the loads. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of each step in the process, making you more confident in setting up your solar power system. Let's get started. Step 1. Connecting the battery to the charge controller. Let's begin with a crucial point. You can't directly connect solar panels to a battery. Why? Because we need a mechanism to stop charging once the battery is full, preventing overcharging and the risk of fire. This is where a charge controller comes into play. The first connection we make is between the battery and the charge controller. It's vital to do this before connecting the solar panels, as hooking up the panels first would damage the charge controller. Now let's talk about sizing the charge controller. The capacity you need depends on the total power of your solar panels. In our example, we're using two 100 watt panels, which added together totals 200 watts. To determine the required current for a charge controller, divide the total power of the panels by the battery voltage. For a 12 volt battery with a 200 watt solar panel, the calculation is 200 watts divided by 12 volts, which equals 16 amps. Therefore, a 20 amp charge controller would be the best fit, as it exceeds our calculated requirement. Next, we need to consider the fuse. The maximum output current of our 20 amp charge controller, multiplied by a safety factor of 125%, gives us 25 amps. Since 25 amp fuses are not common, we will opt for a 30 amp fuse. This choice ensures that in case of a fault, the fuse will melt before any damage occurs to the wire. Speaking of wire, we need one that can handle at least 30 amps. A 10 AWG or 6 square millimeter wire is ideal for this purpose. Remember, it's important to keep the distance between the battery and charge controller as short as possible to minimize losses, which are most significant in this part of your system together with the wire to the inverter. Here's what your system should look like now. This calculation process can be applied to any solar power setup you might have. Step 2. Connecting the solar panels together. You have two main options here wiring in series or in parallel. The choice largely depends on the type of charge controllers you're using. If you have an MPPT charge controller, series wiring is typically the way to go. However, if your solar panels are prone to shading, or if you're using a PWM charge controller, then parallel wiring might be more suitable. I've previously covered series and parallel wiring of solar panels in another video which I highly recommend watching to determine the best setup for your specific situation. For our example, let's assume we're using two 100 watt solar panels. Here's how you should wire them, whether in series or parallel. In both configurations, I've included a 63 amp DC breaker. This breaker acts as a safety switch to turn off the solar panels when necessary. Depending on your system requirements, you could also opt for a 16 amp or 32 amp breaker, but ensure it is DC rated for 100 volts or higher. One critical aspect we haven't discussed yet is the maximum input voltage of your MPPT. Most charge controllers have a limit of around 100 volts. 
you can find this specification on the product's sales page. It's important to calculate whether your MPPT can handle the combined voltage of your solar panels. In our scenario, each panel has a voltage open circuit, or VOC, of 24.3 volts. When wired in series, the voltages add up. Applying a safety factor of 125%, the formula would be 24.3 volts times 2 panels in series times 1.25 equals 60 volts. This is well within the maximum input voltage of our charge controller. If the combined voltage exceeds 100 volts, you will need to consider a series parallel configuration, which I also discuss in another video on my channel. For those using a PWM charge controller, it's crucial to match the solar panel voltage as closely to the battery bank as possible, plus an additional 5 volts. For instance, with a 12 volt battery, aim for at least 17 volts from your solar panels at the PWM input. Step 3. Wiring the solar panels to the charge controller. This step is crucial because we need to ensure the wire is thick enough to handle the voltage drop. This is a common issue due to the typically long distance between the panels and the controller. In our setup, we're going to series wire the two solar panels. Let's say the distance to the charge controller is about 50 feet or 15 meters. Each panel operates at 20.4 volts under normal conditions and has a current output of 4.91 amps. By connecting the panels in series, we effectively double the voltage while maintaining the same current. So our combined voltage is 40.8 volts at 4.91 amps. To address the voltage drop over this distance, we will use a voltage drop calculator, which I will link in the description. Here, we input details like the wire length, current type, which is DC in our case, voltage and current. The calculator will then display the percentage of voltage drop, which should be below 3%. By adjusting the wire diameter in the calculator, we can find the optimal size to minimize voltage drop. After some adjustments, it turns out that 12 AWG or 4 square millimeter wire is suitable for our needs. This wire size ensures that the voltage drop stays within acceptable limits, ensuring efficient energy transfer from the solar panels to the charge controller. Step 4. Connecting the loads. Now we've reached the final step, connecting the loads to our system. These loads can vary from DC devices like bilge pumps, lights or USB chargers, to AC devices powered through an inverter. It's important to match the inverter size with your battery's capacity. For instance, with a 12V 100Ah lithium battery, the maximum inverter size you should use is 1000 watts. I've explained the reason for this in my other videos. In contrast, if you're using a 12V 100Ah lead acid battery, the inverter size should not exceed 240 watts. Let's consider adding a 1000 watt inverter to a 12 volt lithium battery. The current through the wire in this case would be 1000 watts divided by 12, which equals 83 amps. Applying a safety factor of 125%, the calculation becomes 83 amps multiplied by 1.25 resulting in 104 amps. Therefore, we will need a 100 amp fuse. Next, we select a wire capable of handling at least 100 amps. This is to ensure that in case of a fault, the fuse will melt before any damage occurs to the wire itself. A 3WAG or 35mm squared wire would be suitable for this purpose. Here's the complete schematic of our setup. And that's it. That's how you connect two solar panels to one battery, ensuring a safe and efficient solar power system. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful. It helps me out greatly. If you have questions, let me know in the comments.
Are you confused about solar power? Get 7 free solar diagrams through the pinned comments below.